All right, third time's the charm, we hope. This is Arabia, League of Empires, between Drusina and Royal Flushers. So sort of a... Well, Drusina are rather international. They're like uh, Germany, Finland, and um, Norway represented on the team. Even the USA from uh, two of the players. And then we have uh, Royal Flushers, which I believe are um, Brit British exclusively. So let me just fast forward a little bit if needed, but I think we're live, so that's uh, good news here. And uh, let's just dive into talking about the team compositions here while we wait for Arabia to get started. So let's have a look at Drusina here first. I know all of these players quite well. We play, I hang out in their Discord and we play team games frequently, so shouldn't uh, I should have something to say about these guys. We have the Ant-Man as pocket, fantastic pocket player. His current 1v1 rating is 1730, but he has peaked at 1746, so as you can tell, he's uh, obviously a solid player. He generally prefers the pocket position, he's a fantastic boomer, and has gone with Indians for this one, so I'm sure he'll be providing great support to both sides as the game goes on. He's really wow. solid in the reading gameplay from the pocket position as well. Then for his flank, we have Air 12 on the left hand side here. Air 12 also a solid boomer, but an um, amazing flank player as well because he's uh, uh, very, very, very solid in his archer's play. He is in six, at 1656 right now in Bone 1, but his uh, peak rating is at 1789, so he has actually been smelling that um, almost on that uh, 1800 mark. So he's going for Ethiopians for this one, obviously going for the archers, uh, likely with a Drush or um, other sty infantry style opening. I'd say, because uh, you probably wouldn't re wouldn't want to risk um, a straight archers against uh, the opposing player here. And the other flank for Drusina is the infamous Mizel here. He has a very original playstyle overall. He basically never does the same two games in a row, aside from the fact that he loves his monks play. So you always see Mon Mizel making monks. If, if his games go past cast stage, which they usually do, he can be really annoying to play against, to say the least, because his army compositions are tend to be original sometimes. Uh, so yeah, fun fact, I've seen him making Teuton Cab Archers in numbers, for example. So, But he's going to be a great uh, flank addition for sure as well. I see distance and sort of an issue here for both sides here. It's really far from the flank to the one of the sides here. So we might be seeing some uh, collective 2v1 fighting on the left hand side, whereas the right side flanks will be uh, left on their own here. But uh, Portuguese here for Mysel means uh, technologies research faster and all of your units cost less gold, which also includes the monks. So that's something Mysel is going to make use of for sure. Now for the other team, the Royal Flushers. Let's begin with the pocket again here. We have Squeaker in the pocket for the Royal Flushers here. He has a current and peak rating of uh, 1658, so also a solid 1v1 player. He plays with Franks here, which is bad news when you're up against Indians on the other side, but still an extremely solid solid uh, pocket sieve and, uh, and overall has an easy time getting to the boom as well, considering that they, their farm upgrades are for free and the berries are also harvested faster, giving a few leech eco boost. And then for the flanks, we have Dan MT on the left-hand side here with Tatars. Uh, obviously a great sieve after the newest uh, patch. They get to uh, spawn two sheep for free uh, in the Feudal Age, once you reach the Feudal Age, under the TC. And for each new TC, you get two sheep to eat as well. And they also provide not 100, but 150 food per sheep for Tatars, as their herdables grant more food overall. Cab Archer's play for Tatars is likely to be seen if the game goes for long here, because they get thumbering and party and tactics instantly moving into a castle in Imperial Ages. And, uh, but for the opening, I'd say probably Archer's into crossbow still, and this hill here could be a huge issue for both players here. They more or less split their uh, secondary golds here on this hill, so that will be a point of fighting to fall back to and to try and secure somehow for sure. And we have some scouts run in here. I think Airfell risks losing one villager here, but the reaction is good. The unloaded villager gets saved here at the cost of a little bit of idle time. And now for the other flank here. It's Nathaniel who is up against Mysel. Mysel risks losing his starting scout now, but again causes some idle time on this side. Yeah, it looks like Mysel might very well lose his um, 
He's starting to alter now. He's making some militia, going for an infantry opening here. Easy transition for uh, Portuguese, considering that their um, uh, militia cost 20% less gold. So you could even justify making one more moving into the... If you're going for the infantry opening here. I'm assuming a sort of an archer's follow-up from Mysel as well, but you never know. Could be just just Drush Fast Castle as well. And to, uh, into whatever, but... Um, Remains to be seen, but we have Ethiopians on this side, so that's kind of bad news for myself if he goes into the archers here after the rush, because Ethiopians have faster firing archers and also an indirect eco bonus in the fact that they get 100 food, 100 gold upon reaching the next age. Wow. Nice little chase here, doesn't delay the barracks, but uh, uh, idles a villager even a little bit more here. And for Nathaniel here, looks like the idea may be men at arms here because he's with two on gold and is going up at uh, 22 pop here meanwhile we'll see the pockets going up at uh, well there's fuel age in for franks a bit slightly earlier than uh, antman here antman with 20 pop squeaker with 20 pop as well so definitely scouts opening here for these players nathaniel solid player as well he is um uh, at 1594, we're only one right now, but he's peaked at 1733, so absolutely no joke here. We see some militia run in here. Nathaniel still has his scouts, he even has some help from Squeaker here, the pocket with the initial scout of Squeaker. So that makes it a lot harder for Mysel to accomplish anything much with a Drush. But it does indeed delay Nathaniel's forward here, and could be considered an accomplishment itself. And also take, uh, takes out Nathaniel's scout here, so both Mysel and Nathaniel without scouts now. At this stage of the game, Mysel loves his walls as well, so he's about to full wall here, not using the wood line, surprisingly enough, but going towards the edge of the map instead. Walls up from the pocket position as well, looks like Antman is in the process of securing his terrain here, going for the economic approach uh, and securing a little bit of space around the golds here just to make sure they're not too vul vulnerable for archers attack here. You see a Dan MT side, could it, uh, could it have been a, was probably a straight archer's build here from Dan MT, whereas AR-12 is mirroring that with the double ranges himself. Should grant AR-12 the advantage here, simply considering that the Ethiopians archer range, or archers rather, fire 20% faster or whatever it is. No significant scouts fighting on this side. Let's look at the numbers as well. Similar villager uh, numbers, but uh, slight, slight military lead for for Air 12 here. It's blacksmith going up for Dan MT though. I don't think Air 12 has that one yet, so that could be an early fletching for uh, Dan MT here. Could be huge actually. Also, upon reaching Castleish, his uh, archers, which will be crossbows will be granted thumb ring for free and they will fire, fire faster and more accurately so that could negate the Ethiopians to some extent. So we're seeing uh, Maisel being doubled here now but he's uh, pretty good at defending and holding on for a while. He's uh, got some um, Ethiopians archers on him and then the pocket scouts here uh, trying to break in but the walls are more or less complete at least on the right hand side for Maisel. So Squeaker could uh, consider just running further around and try and find an opening before it's too late, but we see Mysel covering some terrain here and he uh, might be able to full wall in time for the scouts to get in. Archers and men at arms break through the palisades, but house walls do the trick here for Mysel. If the wood eco permits, he could also drop a smith or something here. But that's one builder down, that's pretty bad news. Flaring the action here. Maybe Ant-Man will have to provide some of his uh, scouts here. Unless he's going... Hold on. No, never mind. There's a stable. I was a little bit worried that Ant-Man might be going uh, uh, more of a straight fast castle here. But he does indeed have the scouts out like Indian can, Indians can easily do with their cheaper villagers. And he's now going to run in with scouts here and probably kill off uh, quite a few of these archers. Because the archers don't have fletching. And, um, no, it's not going for the archers, he's going to go for the scouts here. Mysel has one tile gap here, but, uh, hey, house walls behind, so the uh, scouts can still not get in. Meanwhile, on the left-hand side, some fighting on the hill here. Looks like Air 12 is taking the better trades here. Hitting and running, even Mike weighing from downhill here. Yeah, has the numbers advantage and firing faster. You can't really... 
mess around with that with Tatars here, but once Castledge kicks in, again, Tatars are going to be favored for a little while against Ethiopians there, so it depends a little bit on who's getting going in first as well. No uh, Fletching and defense for Airfell, amazing, whereas uh, Fletching is just around the corner for Dan MT here. Then the stats will be similar, but the military numbers, pretty uneven, 40 into 6 here. So Mysel has his eco secured, a... 17 villagers on one number camp here, maybe not ideal, but uh, goes for the du double range archers here as well. Here comes the blacksmith, but uh, now we see the ant man on the way to the cast age here. That's going to give Ant-Man a solid head start to the cast age here. Looking at Squeaker's eco, it's not that far off the cast age click, but it's still going to be maybe almost uh, 20 a little bit more 22 percent difference between the two players so the indians camels will be out before the franks double stable knights can uh, uh, get a shot at it here air 12 uh, minding his own business to the left here he has the numbers advantage by far here it's 18 to 8 and um, so far it looks uh, solid for um for air 12 here yeah that's a really late fletching for orange and i'm surprised because orange had the uh, had the um, blacksmith up way before AR-12 did, so must have had some eco uh, issues here. Defensive tower on the farms here, to some extent protecting these golds as well. But here comes Ant-Man, they realize, hey, Mysel is pretty pretty fine over here, has fletching, has a few archers out, so they could go double the left-hand side instead and try and cripple the towers a little bit here. Eight scouts versus six scouts, though, but and both with the upgrades. That's an issue for Antman because, uh, yeah, I was gonna say that's an issue for Antman, but he has uh, husbandry already as well, so he actually has stronger scouts HP wise than the Franks here. Only missing the, the attack upgrade and cast leech is in. We'll be seeing Campbell skewed by the Antman and also the second armor to kick in. So if if they can delay a fight as long as possible here. They would be very well off here. It's Indians as well. Note that they get this extra pierce armor instantly uh, in the cast age. So now these scouts are tankier than uh, your regular generic scouts. So uh, Mysel is fighting larger numbers here. Let's look at the numbers here. 8 for Mysel, 13 for Nathaniel and the faster firing rangers, uh, ranged units for Nathaniel or the archers rather. Mysel will try to chase though. Does he have any skirms in the mix here? Has a few skirms, so that helps out for sure. Nathaniel also full wall though, but what's going on on the left side? Looking for a break in point here. Camels on the way. Dan MT is still feudal, getting wheelbarrow now, so that uh, should suggest a click is on the way. But um, still going to be pretty darn far behind, uh, behind Air 12 and uh, Antman here. AR-12's eco suggests uh, in a prolonged feudal steal. No, never mind, he's on the way. That's uh, that's uh, disregard that last comment. Camels and scouts chasing the Frank scouts here now. Shouldn't be an issue for the Antman here. He has a couple of camels in the mix and uh, more upgrades overall. Nice walling attention from Dan and T, but he can't engage here. He really tries to has to try and stall it until he can reach Castage here, get to the crossbow, get to that free thumb ring, and then maybe, just maybe, but uh, considering there are um, Indians camels in the mix here between everything, the knights of the Frank's pocket of the Royal Freshers won't really contribute enough here either. It's a bit of a mess over here, which is definitely a fight still going in Drusina's favor, even if Air 12 is still in the fuel age on the way to Castle. Numbers are sort of evening out, but uh, Air 12 still with 19 against 10 on the flank sides here. We'll maybe lose the numbers, but we'll still will diminish the enemy numbers as well. And uh, meanwhile, Ant-Man goes to send one camel into raid. Gathering up on a few more camels here, and we'll be going for a joint effort together with Air 12 once uh, Air 12 can reach Castle Age and uh, get to probably both Crossbow and Bodkin here. Yeah. Right hand side, myself trying to break two, still behind in numbers here, it's 11 to 6. But myself is on the way to the cast age as well, it's going to be significantly later to cast age than Nathaniel actually. But this annoyance here is going to help out anyway. 
that was um, um, uh, unfortunate to lose this many numbers for air 12 in that fight there. It uh, basically evens out the numbers here, and now we'll be up against uh, Tatar's uh, crossbows with Bodkin. So now it takes to, they need to pick off as much as possible. Lots of Frank's knights here now. Antman really needs to send those camels in now. Has the defense, but that's about it. Camel and Frank's knights here have full upgrades, so now it's uh, all of a sudden this uh, different story here. Opens up for the camels to get in, and here comes the house to plug it again. Camping the hill here, obviously. Waiting for crossbow and Bodkin for the Tatars player here as well. One significant point though is that Tatars don't get Arbalest. So crossbows, uh, I mean Archer's line, is not really viable after Castlage. A switch will need to be made either into Camels or into Cavalier, Kashyyyk or um, simply Cav Archers. We have a break in here. What other numbers? Like 10 against... Roughly 10 knights as well. 11, 10 camels, 11 against 11 knights. They are probably pausing now because of Ant-Man who sometimes have some lag issues and needs a pause to catch up. Worst case, it will be a disconnect, but uh, I think they'll be fine. It's an early ballistics here for Dan and T. That could be extremely valuable here with uh, Tatar's uh, crossbows. Yeah, this hill is crucial, I'll call Nuri, right? Because uh, there's golds here for both players. So if you control this hill with uh, some presence, army presence or a castle, you steal one gold off the enemy and you have your own to take as well. And crossbows doing... Uh, I mean, Tatar's crossbows, free thumb ring. This is really important. Oh, it's a pretty, pretty decent fight, actually, for them here anyway. But uh, looking at the numbers, roughly similar numbers here. The knights are down, though, so that's huge. Well, let's see if they can win this fight. This doesn't look too bad. Look at the numbers here now. It's 22 for H12. It's uh, only 10 archers for Dan and T, right? So they're diving numbers. They're going into the cab archers already, that has to be a bad call here against uh, Ethiopian's crossbow. Diving in with just a few like that. I don't understand that uh, choice here. Four range cab archers, though. It's certainly viable past cast lage for um, Tatars here, but... Their frame delay in the firing it is just a huge issue. <laughs> Let's see the right hand side here. Crossbows versus crossbows. Myself fighting uphill. Has elite skirm in the mix now. Has to hold his own here while uh, uh, Air 12 and the Admin are doing the best on the left hand side. But this hill needs to be taken. And uh, looking at the ecos though, it's much stronger economy overall for uh, Lucina. Well, not much stronger, but. Uh, I'm uh, pretty sure Antman will reach an earlier Imperial Ridge here with this uh, villager setup and the boom. Lots and lots and lots of farms here. Franks with only two TCs, I believe. And uh, Antman with uh, two, three TCs and some more farms and mills here. Yeah, I mean, if you have four ranges with Tatars and that all those instant upgrades, but. Uh, uh, still with this mass with the open crossbow in the mix, sure you can hit and run, but if you're forced into a fight, I think the crossbows would just dominate because of the slower fire uh, fire rate of the cab archers here. Looks like they're doing decent though. Also, Indian camels with the extra pierce armor, they would challenge cab archers much more easily in terms of speed and... Uh, uh, and damage than uh, generic camels would. So I think AR-12 and uh, Ant-Man has a good combo here against uh, Cow Watchers, especially in Castle Age. Uh, it's a different story, of course, if Dan MT uses the Cow Watchers for the raiding potential. He hits some exposed eco here, for example, of the Ant-Man idling that, idling this, right? But they're not really in a position to do so well. They need to take the hill there, and looks like Drushina may be... Maybe granting this, uh, be taking this hill back. And um, they're not really mining stone there. Antman is mining a bit of stone. Could be thinking about the castle all the way over here, actually. Probably for defensive purposes at home, but it would be an option just to secure and fortify this hill. Uh, British, British team, Royal, uh, Royal Flushers, are off the hill here now. And uh, the numbers are increasing for Antman there as well. 31 against 8. 35 against 9 army on the flanks here, and then there's Ant-Man and Squeaker with roughly equal numbers where the camels should shine even missing that last attack upgrade. So 
So we're stacking up on knights here. Let's look, look at the Ecos here as well. Look at Ant-Man. He is, could be clicking Imp right any moment now if he wants to. He is floating the food and gold necessary. Does he have the building still? He is uh, missing uh, Monastery and uh, University, I guess. And then he's going to go for the Imp. So Imp right around the corner for the Ant-Man. Whereas Squeaker is miles away from that Imperial Age click. Unless he just did, but he didn't. Mycel seems to be doing good on his side as well. Going for the organ guns here now. Probably freaking out Nathaniel a little bit. There are not with a too threatening number just yet though. Uh, but um, the castle of course. Great defensive spot as well for Mycel. Right up against the flank here. You could argue that the castle on the hill would be even better to um, take the hill for the map control presence. And uh, keep any archer's aggression out from this side. But to secure a base which is arguably just as important here. Now we have quite a few camels chasing here. I think Ant-Man is trying to go for a raid now, maybe on the pocket. Should be a somewhat easy breakthrough through the Palisades for Indian camels there. No, they're um, they're going back for the um, the chase here. And let's see the camels here, how they hold up against Cavalry Fire here, if we'll see some hit and run here now. See? <laughs> I think that was four volleys for uh, ten Cavalchers to take out. Take out one uh, one uh, camel there. Air 12 booming hard too, indeed. Look at the villager numbers here. It's uh, way above 100 for the Atman. He's 50% Imperial Age, while Air 12 is also Imperial Age. And the rest of the British team, they are actually still uh, far away. Even Squeaker, the pocket, is uh, missing gold and uh, food to get up here. So they must have had larger investments in terms of uh, military here. Ant-Man now chasing the Cav Archers, proving that Cav Archer has to be the wrong call here in Castle for the Tars, especially against Indians with that extra Pierce armor. Knight's number is increasing here though, so with some patient play here from Royal Flushers, they could still accomplish things here. But here comes a hill, Castle on the hill, as I mentioned earlier from the Ant-Man, was gathering stone at home and is now going to take this hill. And with the Imperial Age be able to push with trebuchets as well in this area. Lots and lots of idols for Dan MT now. He's actually gone. Uh, stayed on one TC for a long time here. And then... Uh, right side. <laughs> and my side just pure bullshitting. Well, it worked as a de delaying UFO uh, at the very least. But uh, now we have a significant mass of Ethiopian's crossbows here. This could be an area to hit now. But you'd still have to deal with uh, Ant-Man's soon-to-be heavy and Imperial camels. Knights coming on the hill there, it's castle going up, that's going up for sure, no question about it. And uh, the camels dive in to take out both, uh, look at this, look at them handling the cab archers here. If the cab archers don't hit and run, they just melt to the camels here. Now, you can't do anything because of that higher pierce armor of Indians, so in this matchup it's uh, particularly efficient. Look at them and his military numbers, four military, more stables going up here for camels or even hussar raids now. And... Um, uh, the only issue now being Meisel's side. But if Drusina can win the left-hand side and take Dan MT completely out of the game, then I think it's GG because uh, you'd be one player down and have no military presence whatsoever. Overall military now more than 100 for uh, Team Drusina here and it's roughly in the 60-70s for Royal Flushers. Meisel, of course, losing numbers here but is also not taking the casualties inside the space. He's grabbing some relics for gold income. And uh, yeah, we'll just hold on here. He could get some knight conversions if needed as well. Here comes the castle of AR-12 as well. Yeah, red needs uh, Arbalest here to push, I guess. Could raid with some Shotel warriors though, could uh, could break in over here. Maybe there's another castle, so I think myself is going to extend into more organ guns here. Arb is in Fire 12 as well. Note that the whole Royal Flushers team is still in Castle Age. Look at the camels over here. They are now heavy camels against Castle Age. Frank's Knights. I mean, they're losing here because of the numbers. So that's a bit of a bad engagement for Ant-Man here. But uh, all in all, still, it's some casualties taken. And it's going to be Drusina taking the first game here. 
So uh, Ethiopian uh, machine gun arbalists here and uh, tanky tanky Indian camels here. Actually Imperial Camel. I thought they were heavy camel, but they actually even got around to the Imperial Camel upgrade here. And the game ends at 40 minutes here between Drusina and Royal Flushers. Now bear in mind that the last uh, season when these teams met, they had uh, they went to a 1-1. They won one map each. Uh, Royal Flushers had a fantastic Islands play and Islands is still in the pool, I think. So uh, we'll see what the next one brings here. Let's just have a look at the stats here. Great hold by Mysel as well on the right hand side. Didn't really let the enemy aggression inside his base. So it was basically a 1v1 on this side. Whereas uh, AR-12 and the Ant-Man could push the other side. Take Dan and T out of the game in terms of military numbers. And then go in for the raids with Imperial Camels finally on the Frank's side here. And they don't have any answer to that in the Castle Age. You could tell from the KDE that there was still some um, good engagements from um, the Royal Flushers as well. And look at Nathaniel's KDE, for example. On my side, it's 96 to 91. My side losing more units than killed. But on the other side, definitely on the positive side for Drusina here. Atman overall with the greatest boom here. Had the most villagers. Got to 147 villagers in the end. Massive Indians boom there. And then the uptimes very significant as well. Pretty darn early Imperial Age here, AR-12 almost as early as well. And Squeaker being the only player of um, Royal Flushers reaching, reaching the Imperial Age in this game. 